We are here to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month runs from September 15th through October 15th, and that's the time when we celebrate all of the cultures that speak Spanish, the Latin American countries. Many of you guys, your families have come from Spanish-speaking countries. Remember, we are America, so people come here from all over the world. So we're celebrating that rich culture. Now, the Hispanic culture is rich with music and food and stories. And I'm going to share one of those stories with you today. The story that I'm going to share with you today comes to us from Cuba. Is anybody in here's family from Cuba? Well, my family is not from Cuba, but my husband's family is from Cuba. That's why my last name is Montero. So my daughter is growing up half Cuban and half Irish, which is what I am. But our stories that are folk tales come to us from all over the world. And what folk tales are, are stories that have been passed down from generation to generation. The mother told the story to their child, the child grows up, the child tells the story to their child, and so on and so on. Many of our fairy tales, you know, like Cinderella, Goldilocks, all of those stories were folk tales. Fairy tales are part of folk tales. Those are stories that are passed down from generation to generation. I would like to turn you on to folk tales. Take a look over here in our library. Our folk tale section is quite large. We have one, two, three shelves full of folk tales. So maybe when you're wandering around the library, you're wondering, what should I check out? Maybe you could try a folk tale. The story I'm going to share with you today is called Martina the Beautiful Cockroach. And there's many, you know, as just like, have you ever played the game telephone where one person has something and they whisper it to the other person's ear, and they whisper it to the other person's ear, and they whisper it to the other person's ear, and by the end, the story is completely different? That happens in folk tales too. So my friends, Miss Ruby and Miss Antigua, know this story very well, but stories change as people tell the story. So there might be certain elements that may be the same and may be different. While I'm reading this story, you will hear me say some interesting Spanish words, but usually after it says the Spanish word, it explains what it is. So for those who don't speak Spanish, that will give you a little clue. Now, you might see me as the color what? Green. Green, and when you think about cockroaches, what color do you think of? Brown. Brown, but remember, Martina is a Cuban cockroach. And believe it or not, this is an actual picture of a Cuban cockroach. And that is why the illustrator who is Michael Austin, illustrated Martina as green and her family as green. So when you see them as green, that's the reason why you see them as green instead of brown because they are Cuban cockroaches. Are we ready for the story? Yes. This story is called Martina the Beautiful Cockroach. It is retold by Carmen Agradini and it's illustrated by Michael Austin. And the pictures are quite beautiful. As you can see, I copied some of them. Martina the Beautiful Cockroach. Martina Josefina Catalina Cucaracha was a beautiful cockroach. She lived in a cozy street lamp in Old Havana with her big, lovable family. Do cockroaches have a big family? Yes. yes. Now that Martina was 21 days old, she was ready to give her leg in marriage. The Cucaracha household was crawling with excitement. Every senora in the family had something to offer. Tia Cuca gave her una peineta, a seashell comb. Mama gave her una mantilla, a lace shawl. But Abuela, her Cuban grandmother, gave her un consejo increíble, some shocking advice. You want me to do what? Martina was aghast. You are a beautiful cockroach, said Abuela. Finding husbands to choose from will be easy. Picking the right one could be tricky. Uh, but, but, stammered Martina. How will spilling coffee on a suitor's shoes help me to find a good husband? Her grandmother smiled. It will make him angry. 
then you'll know how he will speak to you when he loses his temper. Martina wasn't so sure. Think that's a good idea? Meanwhile, Papa sent El Perico, the parrot, to spread the word. Soon, all of Havana, from the busy sidewalks of El Prado to El Moro Castle, was a buzz with the news. Martina, the beautiful cockroach, was ready to choose a husband. As was the custom, Martina would greet her suitors from the balcony under her family's many watchful eyes. Daintily, she sat down and crossed her legs, and crossed her legs, and crossed her legs. She didn't have long to wait. Don Gallo, the rooster, strutted up first. Martina tried not to stare at his splendid shoes. Keeping one eye on his reflection, Don Gallo greeted her with a sweeping bow. Caramba! You really are a beautiful cockroach. I will look even more fabulous with you on my wing. With that, he leaned over and crooned. Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha, beautiful muchacha, won't you be my wife? Martina hesitated only for an instant. A, a coffee, senor? <coughs> right on cue, Abuela appeared. With a quick glance at her grandmother, Martina nervously splattered coffee onto the rooster's spotless shoes. Oh my, she said with mock dismay, I'm all feelers today. Giggity-gee, the rooster was furious. Clumsy cockroach, I will teach you better manners when you are my wife. Martina was stunned. The coffee test had worked. Uh, a most humble offer, senor, she said coyly, but I cannot accept. You are much too cocky for me. <laughs> Don Cerro, the pig, hoofed up next. His smell curled the little hairs on Martina's legs. Oh, what an unimaginable scent, Martina wheezed. Is it some new pig cologne? Oh. Oh, no, senorita. It is the sweet aroma of my piggest eye. Rotten eggs, turnip peels, and stinky cheese. <laughs> Don Cerno licked his chops and sang, Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha, beautiful muchacha, won't you be my wife? <laughs> Martina hesitated had already left in search of coffee. She wasted no time with the pig. Groom, groom, squealed Don Cerdo as he dashed at the coffee on his shoes. Oh, what a tragedy for my poor loafers. He really is quite a ham, thought Martina. Calm yourself, senor. I'll clean him for you. Ha <laughs> ha, say you will, he snorted. When you are my wife, there will be no end to cleaning up after me, eh? Uh, a most, Martina rolled her eyes in disbelief. A most charming offer, senor, she said dryly. But I must decline. You are much too boorish for me. The coffee test had saved her from yet another unsuitable suitor. The pig was scarcely out of sight when Don Lagarto, the lizard, crept over the railing. His oily fingers brushed the little cockroach's lovely mantilla. You shouldn't sneak up on a lady like that. For some reason, I don't sneak. I clean, he said, circling Martina. For some reason, this fellow really bugged her. I've had enough of creeps for one day, said Martina. Adios. But I need you. Wait. The lizard fell on one scaly knee and warbled. Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha, beautiful muchacha, won't you be my wife? Martina sighed. Let me see if there's any coffee left. <laughs> this, this time, she wasn't taking any chances. Martina returned with two cups for the lizard. Psst, psst, 
he's fat. Don Lagarto was livid. He changed colors three times before he finally found his true one. And to think, he hissed, I was going to eat, uh, marry you. Martina stared at the lizard. You could have heard a bread crumb drop. Ah, uh, food for thought, senor, Martina said icily. But I must refuse. You are far too cold-blooded for me. When her grandmother returned to collect the day's coffee cups, Martina was still fuming. I'm going inside, abuela. So soon? See, si, I'm afraid of what I'm, well, whom I might meet next. Abuela drew Martina to the railing and pointed into the garden below. Well, what about him? Martina looked down at the tiny brown mouse and her cockroach heart began to beat faster. Dicky dee, dicky da. Oh, Abuela, he's adorable. Where has he been? Right here all along. Well, what do I do? Go talk to him and just be yourself. Martina handed Abuela her peineta and mandilla and then scuttered down the, the garden. The mouse was waiting. Hola, hello. His voice was like warm honey. My name is Perez. <coughs> she whispered shyly. I'm Martina. The beautiful cockroach, he finished for her. Do you think I'm beautiful? The little mouse turned pink under his fur. Well, my eyes are rather weak, but I have excellent ears. I know you are strong and good, Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha. Then he squinted sweetly. Who cares if you are beautiful? Diggy ding, diggy ding. Martina, don't forget the coffee. It was Abuela. No, thought Martina, no coffee for Perez. Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha. See, Abuela. Martina knew better than to argue with her Cuban grandmother. With a heavy heart, she reached for the cup. But Perez got there first. Quick as a mouse, he splashed Café Cubano onto Martina's shoes. Now the coffee was on the other foot. Martina was too delighted to be angry. At last she had found her perfect match, and she had to ask, how did you know about the coffee test? Perez grinned. Well, mi amor, my love. I too have a Cuban grandmother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Martina, Josefina, Catalina, Cucaracha. It's not real. I just saw But you can scare everybody in your family with it over the weekend. Yeah. I want you to either, there's so many different things you could do. You could just simply write your favorite part of the story. You could sequence the story. You could choose one character and tell me why you think Martina should have or shouldn't have married him. You could write the story from the perspective of Don Lagarto or Don Gallo, you know how they did the true story of the three little pigs written from the point of view of the wolf? You could do that. You can do anything, you can do a poem. You could study cockroaches and write about that. Anything that your teachers come up with, I would love for you to do because I want to put all of your beautiful writing all over the library and downstairs in those, in those bulletin boards. So that is your challenge, so you get a toy 
to scare your friends and family with. But I want to see your creativity, and you guys become the authors and the illustrators. Did you have fun with that story? Yes. I'm glad. Thank you for coming. How many do you have? You can stop. How many do you have?